Hi, welcome to this video. I welcome you all to my channel all about mechanical engineering. This is my third video on basics of thermodynamics. For the first two videos, you can use the link which is mentioned in the description. In today's video, we'll try to understand what is thermodynamic state, what is thermodynamic process, what are various types of thermodynamic processes, what is thermodynamic path, state function and path function. So let us start. What is thermodynamic state? In simple terms, we can define a thermodynamic state as any unique condition of system is called as state. Examples. The first one. Consider we have a container which is having heated gas present inside it and you have a piston which is restricted. Now, at this point of time, the various properties of system will be having certain values with them. Let us say these properties we are considering mass equals to m, pressure equals to p1, volume equals to v1, temperature equals to t1. Then these values of each and every property is trying to indicate the condition at which the system is present. And taken all these properties and their values together represents a unique condition which is available at the system. So they are representing the state of the system. Consider another example. By removing this restriction, we are allowing this piston to move in upward direction. Now this heated gas will try to push this piston in upward direction and expand itself to reduce the pressure. So here, the first property, mass is m, which is same as initial condition, because the example we are talking about is an example of closed system and as per definition of closed system, mass interaction between system and surrounding is zero. So mass is remaining unchanged. But because of movement of piston in upward direction, pressure reduces to P2 and the volume is increasing to a value V2 and because of expansion, the gas is cooled Hence, temperature T2 is less as compared to T1. Now, if you consider a graph, let us say PV graph, pressure volume graph, pressure taken on Y axis, volume taken on X axis, then state number 1 in this example and state number 2 in this example can be represented by a single point. So, here point number 1 indicates state of example number 1 and Point number two indicates state of example number two. In the first case, we were having more pressure, less volume. So more pressure is available P1, less volume is available V1. In second case, we were having less pressure, more volume. So less pressure, that is P2 and more volume, that is V2. So it should be noted, state can be represented on a graph by knowing any two properties of the system. We have considered here pressure and volume as two properties but you can take any other two properties such as temperature entropy or temperature enthalpy etc to represent a state of a system. Now thermodynamic process. As per definition, a process occurs due to change of state of a system. We are considering the same example here to understand the process. We were having a heated gas inside the container, then it was allowed to expand by removing this restriction and then there are some changes in properties. So there is a change of state. Here you are having more pressure, less volume here, less pressure, more volume. And this is because expansion process is carried on this system. Unless and until we are removing this restriction, this state of the system is not going to change to this value and that is why it is said that a process is responsible for change of state or we can say that a process occurs due to change of state. So your state 1 is changing to 2 because you are carrying an expansion process and that is the definition of a thermodynamic process. Now various types of thermodynamic processes. The first one non-flow process. A process in which there is fixed boundary undergoing a change of state is called as non-flow process. And the second type of process is flow process. 
As per definition, a process in which mass is crossing the boundary during change of state is called as flow process. Now there are examples. The first one. We have seen that there was heated gas inside the container then it was allowed to cool down and there is a change of state. Here we have a container and a piston so we have a fixed boundary. Means mass is not crossing the boundary. It is not allowed to leave the system and neither new mass is added. So here you have a fixed boundary and there is a change of state because certain values of these properties are changing means this is an example of non-flow process. The second one as per definition it says mass crossing the boundary. So here you have certain amount of water in which we are again adding certain quantity of water and at the same time there is removal of water from this tank and we are taking it out. So mass is crossing the boundary it is entering in the system also and it is leaving the system also. So there is mass crossing the boundary. Second the change of state. Suppose this initial water which we are having is having a temperature of 100 degree Celsius and now you are adding cool water to it. So because of addition of this cool water continuously and removal of this water when you are having this water added cooled water added then here the temperature is going to reduce with the amount of water added per unit time means over a period of time whatever water you are discharging will be having decreased temperature. So the state of this water the temperature of this water is decreasing with the addition of mass means we are having a change of property that is temperature and whenever a property changes there is change of state. So we have a change of state. So the both conditions first one mass crossing the boundary and change of state are fulfilled at this example and that's why it is an example of flow process. Now types and then thermodynamic path. Now what is thermodynamic path? As per definition the way in which system changes from one state to another is called as path. We have seen that on PV diagram state 1 is changing to state number 2. Now the way the path the way in which the system changes this is the line indicate that system is traveling from state 1 to state 2 using this way. So this way is called as path. Now it is not mandatory that you should be having only single way for change of state for any process. Let us say you have the same state 1 and state 2 and the system is changing from 1 to 2 using this way another path. So this is second path utilized for change of state. So the way which is used to represent the change of state is called as path. Now state function. The definition says the quantities whose value depends upon the end state of the processes but not on the path followed. Such quantities are called as state function. State functions are also called as point functions. Examples of state functions are pressure, volume, temperature and enthalpy etc. Let us try to understand it with this example. This is a PV diagram. You have a process carried and there is a change of state from 1 to 2. Let us say this is path number 1 and there is a process carried from 1 to 2. And in another case you are having process 1 to 2 using this red colored path and there are two different paths available on this. So here pressure and volume are set as state function because if you take path 1 or take path 2, in both the cases once you reach state number 2, the value of pressure will be P2 means this value P2 is independent of the path followed. Which path you are following is not going to alter this pressure value. Similarly, the volume once you are at this end state 2, the value of volume will be V2. 
it doesn't matter which path you are using for the process and the value is depending on the end state and that's why it is called as state function. It is also called as point function because this function, this quantity that is pressure or volume can be represented by a single point on a graph and that's why the name is point function. Now path function. What is path function? Having the same example here but I have used various paths. As per definition the quantities whose value depends upon the path followed during the process such quantities are called as path function. Examples are work and heat. Let us say we are changing state of a system from 1 to 2 using this path indicated by black color and this is second path indicated by red color. Now work. The work supplied or work obtained work during this path and the work during this path will be different. Why? Because as we can see this is a larger route which means more amount of work will be supplied. And this is another route means here less amount of work will be available. So in this conditions we are having value of work depending on the path followed and that's why these are called as path functions. Here we are talking about an expansion process. So in an expansion process work is obtained. So the work obtained in first path is more and in the second process it is less. So this was all about today's topic. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you for watching this.